This is my RV-12 IS. It's a factory built light sport kit plane. Among its unusual features is the ability to remove the wings so the plane can be transported and stored in a garage. Now I don't know if anybody actually does that, but it was a design goal of the team that built it. Now whether you like that feature or not, it seems to be the focus of discussion in some circles. Not because the wings come off, but because that precludes putting the fuel tanks in the wings. Instead, the fuel tank in my plane sits right behind the two seats in the cockpit. Several times now I've had people express their opinion that the placement of the tank is a safety violation and that the only right place for fuel is in the wings. I'm the kind of guy who respects other people's opinions, even though I may disagree. So I'm not going to dismiss their complaint at all, but I will make the case that Hey, it's, it's, it's not so bad. Now, I'm not trying to put words in their mouths, but this is what I think they're concerned about. A post-impact fire is unimaginable, and I feel real sorrow for anyone who has suffered through this or succumbed to it. This is a T-38. I'm familiar with this plane. Like many supersonic planes that have thin wings, the fuel is carried within the fuselage. There's just no room for tanks in the wings. Even military planes with tip tanks or drop tanks very likely transferred fuel into a fuselage-mounted internal tank. So why do I point this out? Well, it turns out simply enough that not all planes carry fuel in the wings. Even the lowly Piper J3 Cub carried gas right ahead of the instrument panel, just ahead of the aptly named firewall. Here is the X-15. You guessed it, anhydrous ammonia in one tank? liquid oxygen in another, and both of them are located within the fuselage. Consider the case, though, of aircraft designed to fly long distances. They require massive amounts of fuel to stay aloft for many hours at a time. This is the Boeing 747, capable of international non-stop flying. It carries fuel in the wings, of course, but also in the fuselage. A fuel tank the size of a two-car garage sits right under the passenger compartment at the wing carry-through position. There also is a tank at the rear of the plane as well, just behind the passenger compartment. So it's just really not unprecedented for tanks to be located in or immediately adjacent to where people are sitting. But I want to address the issue of whether fuel in the wings is inherently safer. You know, I used to own a little Grumman TR2. This was a little two-seat plane, very agile, stubby wings, and it flew like a little fighter. What a fun airplane that was. Now, one of its innovations was that the tubular wing spar doubled as a fuel tank, one in each wing. Safer, you might think? Well, the fuel gauges were simple thermometer-looking tubes on the cabin sidewalls. When the tanks were full, the fuel rose up in the tubes to indicate the quantity available. Simple enough, but crash-worthy? If an impact ruptured the tubes, fuel would spill into the cockpit. But maybe you think, well, that's just one plane and it's a poor example. So let's consider what might be the standard bearer of general aviation, the Cessna Skyhawk. Fuel is carried in two wing tanks and gravity fed to the engine fuel pump. True it is that the tanks are in the wings, but how does the fuel get from the wings to the engine? Fuel travels down from the wing tanks through the door posts to get to the fuel selector valve. In doing so, the fuel line is actually carried through the passenger compartment. And since the tank selector valve in this plane and nearly every other plane is within the passenger compartment, fuel again is directed to a position within the cockpit. If a structural failure occurs, the fuel line could be severed at any point and flood the cabin with liquid gas and fumes ready to ignite. Due to the gravity feed nature of the fuel line, there's just nothing to stop the flow of gas once started. So here again is my RV-12. Is it inherently safer to have fuel in the wings? Well, I don't know that, but I also don't worry that it's inherently less safe with the tank in the cabin. If I can believe that the designers focused on making the passenger cabin strong and crashworthy, then the fuel tank should be just as protected as the passengers are. This photo is from the crash of a Cessna 206 Skywagon in Anchorage, Alaska in 2010. It's a reminder that any airplane has the potential to be a hazard if it's not maintained properly and flown professionally with care. 
You can minimize the risk to yourself and to your passengers by flying right. Let's all be safe, and I hope to see you in the next episode, right here on this channel.